I always wanted to be loved, but you would have to have it to learn it. And so I started working with dogs. I didn't know what love was. I'm a dog walker. I work in New York. Margo, it's okay. I walk all types of dogs. Come on, Boo. I love it. Schema. I know, I know. The only person she'll go up to who likes Schema, but she doesn't like anybody else. <laughs> Me working with dogs taught me a lot. After all the things I went through, I never thought I would have a connection with them. I grew up in Brooklyn. It was me, my mom, and 15 kids. She was on drugs, so she would disappear. I'm the oldest, so all they had to depend on was me. And then it becomes, it becomes so hard because it's like, how, how am I supposed to take care? Like, what am I supposed to do? When I was like 14, my dad got out of prison and got custody of me. At the beginning, everything was great. We, we played, we went out to movies, everything. As I got older, I think it was around like 15, 16, I started to realize that I wasn't attracted to men. After that, I don't think he could stomach the fact that his daughter could be a lesbian. He started treating me differently and then he stepped over a boundary a father is not supposed to. It's a lot of not good memories. It's a lot of like, just running away and crying and being in the backyard. And just sitting there in the rain, hoping somebody come and just save you. Either you're gonna sit here and be in here forever and keep going through this, or you can get out of here. And I got out. Around 2008, the economy had crashed. I didn't really have any money. I couldn't get a job. I was sending oh, my resume over and over and over again. I was getting nothing, nothing. My girlfriend at the time, she was working in a dog daycare. And she's like, come work in a daycare. And I'm like, no. And the areas I grew up in, um, most of the dogs were terrifying because they, you know, were either fighting or they were just overly aggressive. She kept asking and asking and asking, and I couldn't find a job. So eventually I gave in and I was like, okay, I'm gonna come down for the interview. So I went into the big dog daycare and as I walk in, the dogs start to separate themselves. I thought it was for me or whatever, but then I see this big black Rottweiler named Boogie. He's huge. He like walks towards me. I'm looking at him. I mean, he like puts one paw on the other paw on my shoulders. I'm sweating. And on the inside, I'm going, he's gonna bite your face off. But then he like licks the side of my face. It felt like he took all the bad energy and the bad things I've been going through and just took it. And I just felt new. It felt like that dog took all the pain I was going through, everything I was going through, he took it without even saying anything. And um, from then on, it was just like, I had to have dogs in my life. And I started dog walking on my own. Basically, just grew my business. There's LeBeau, Roxy, Margo, Watson, Kaizy, Nicoletta, Peanut, Luke, Luna, Agnes, St. Clair, Luna Beyonce, Dr. Drado, Led Zeppelin, and Lexi. Every day I got Zeppelin giving me a teddy bear and Lexi coming down barking at me because it's time for her to eat. And she's shaking her butt at the same time like, girl, you late. 
oh, and I'm not even late. Like, oh, you late, girl. I need my food. And it was just like, I was having fun, and they was having fun with me, and it was just awesome. Hima was the only one Lexi immediately loved, immediately trusted, and never barked at. The dogs love her so much that you just feel that there's a really deep connection there. To have somebody that really cares and is that invested in the dogs, it's a really big deal. I actually got to learn a whole new side of Nicoletta through her being walked by Kima. She was incredibly helpful in giving Nicoletta another person who really understood her. When I first came to the run, I didn't even know her. She was so kind. She just took the ball, kept throwing it to toes, back and forth, back and forth. Team is very casual and funny and like, conversational and all those things. It just is like an added bonus to like the person who's walking your dog. How she is with the animals is how I wish everybody was with animals. And how she is with the animals is the way everybody should be with other people. She's one of the people in my life that I respect the most because I know what she's done to get where she is. All the stuff I've been through and all the stuff I encountered, like, why do I want to love? You understand? Like, why do I want to care? Like, what, like, why should I? After I met Boogie, it was different. One day, I just grabbed his big old head and I, like, looked in his eyes and was like, I love you. That was the first time I said those words that I actually meant it. Boogie taught me when you love the right way and you're loved the right way, you don't feel that hurt from before. You don't feel the nothingness that you felt. A lot of dogs I work with on an everyday basis, um, the rescue guys, you could tell they've been through a lot. The people that they did trust didn't do right by them. They hurt too. I realized if they can come out with one eye missing, one leg missing, been through the pits of hell and still can love, why can't I? Now I'm married and I'm able to love somebody so unconditionally. I now have a family of my own. We've been married for four years. She's generous, she's kind, she's sweet, she's always there. How can you not love her? How can you not look up to her? How can you not be like, wow, your struggle has not kept you back from even trying to still have relationships? Dogs and humans. We're looking for the same thing. At one point, we needed to be rescued from something, and we needed to be loved, and that's what it is. Like, they showed me I deserve to be loved, so I gave them the same.